Welcome to the very first episode of Know Thy Enemy. Um, this is for my Reinar guides. If you are playing other heroes, this might also be beneficial to learn how to beat Reinar as well. But this is mainly for the Reinar mains who want to up their game as far as versing certain heroes go. The very first uh, episode will be of versing Claws Leviar, or just Leviar in general. Now, Leviar, a few things you need to know before going into versing Leviar. One thing is that you are going to be versing a hero with a lot more health than you, so usually they'll be running Skullcap, their Carrion Husk, and the Scab Skin Leathers. So with this, I opt to play a, my full package of 9 defense reactions. This allows us to get further into the late game, it allows us to have a little bit more health. Um, even though the idea would be not to go into the late game with Leviar, but usually that I've found with versing Leviar is when you go late game into Leviar, they tend to maybe misstep one of their attacks or they have to play a banish card, like they have to banish a card, which during the near the mid end game um, they will have to like uh, rely on more banishing rather than more attack so along with this I still go with my standard package of my skull cap my tunic my my scab skin leathers and my goliath gauntlet in this game it didn't come up but usually use your goliath gauntlet on the CNC turns but for this I used it as a finisher so because Leviah is a hero without any on-hit abilities, we are able to put Pulping into our list. So, this is one of the cards you can put in that don't block, but this is also another matchup where you have to cut Gorgonian Tome. Leviah is known to run a Gorgonian Tome. Um, it allows them to have an extra card in their Banish Zone, uh, in their Graveyard for free, basically. And we don't want to run into a matchup where we play ours first and then they play theirs, draw, allowing them to draw two. Also, on top of this, they are able to banish their Gorgonian Tome before you're able to trigger your Gorgonian Tome to draw two. So, when versing Claws Leviah, one of the biggest things you need to worry about, of course, is their Blood Rush Bellows turns. Their Blood Rush Bellows turns usually revolves around swinging for 5, swinging for 5, and then swinging with another attack, um, which more than often is a card that they have to banish with. The way I personally play around this is I play, as I said, a very defensive build, um, uh, allowing me to play a bit more combo-y with uh, other cards. Um, so... Blocking three cards from your hand, so the first attack, the second attack, and the third attack. If they don't swing with the third attack, then um, you're able to just uh, like have an extra card in hand. But if they do end up swinging with a big attack on their second attack because they don't have enough resources for their second claw, you would block two of your cards. Okay. So when we verse Leviathan, we need to be a lot more combo heavy. We cannot rely on uh, simple cheesing out your opponent with reckless swings. We can't um, rely on just barraging beatdowns. We need to set up a lot of different moving components. The way I do this is by arsenaling cards, or like if I just have one card in my hand, I'll just arsenal card and end my turn, which allows me to play into more late game kind of build. So, we'll go on to, also on top of this, um, the reason why you want to combo off against a Leviathan is because they like to block with cards from their hand so that they can get cards in their graveyard to banish. And if we're able to just intim their whole hand, they aren't able to block with any of them, making them force, uh, forcing them to roll scab skin leathers, or they don't have cards in their banish zone, uh, in their graveyard to banish with. Um, and... Even if we just are like forcing them to block with two cards, sometimes they will have to be forced to block with the wrong card. Alongside Le Levi's massive toolbox is Tome of Torment. An early way to determine if they are they are playing Shadow of Blastment and the Tome of Torment package 
is the fact that they will block off early and then they will go into playing the Shadow of Blasphemet and then banishing their Tome of Torment. Um, this, of course, as well, if they are running Gambler's Gloves, 90% of them will be running Gambler's Gloves. Um, and, yeah, th th those are usually the ways that I determine if they're running uh, the Shadow Blasphemet and Tome of Torment package. So what does this allow for um, Leviathan to do? The Tome of Torment allows them to push past their limits each turn. They're able to banish a card, like let's say with the Dread Screamer, then, then they can roll Scapskin Leathers, allow them to, to draw an extra card and be able to swing with another attack and then swing with another attack if they could get a good enough roll. Alongside this is Deep Rooted Evil. There will be a lot of players who will be playing just one Deep Rooted Evil, even though they are running Claws, but the Deep Rooted Evil serves as the same purpose that Hexagore does where you are swinging for six on one attack. Luckily, this didn't come up in this game. I really wish I could have shown you how to play around these, but it's simply just by being able to block a little bit further and um, forcing them to go into the extreme late game and then killing off their um, Shadow of Blasphemet. Along with... Sh uh, not Shadow of Blasphemet, um, Blasphemet. Alongside this is Doomsday. This was a game where Doomsday came up in the extreme late game, but by that time, I'm able to set up a combo to kill them uh, indefinitely with... Uh, yeah, I was able to kill them indefinitely. The Doomsday is best played when it's played earlier on in the game. Um, if a Blasphemate is played off the Doomsday during the early game, you have to focus everything into destroying that Blasphemate simply by them swinging with a Dread Scream and then swing for six means that you probably will be losing the game. This is a game where, as I did state, came up in the late game, um, which is not where you want to be. One way you can do this, which I don't recommend, um, is to take a lot of damage and then deal a lot of damage back. And putting them back onto that whole idea where they won't have a lot of cards in their graveyard to block with, um, by getting extra momentum off the uh, Blasphemate. So the Blasphemate on itself, um, it, of course you can swing and then banish a 6 attack from your hand so that they can stay alive. But once they're in their defensive position of doing that, you're able to set up combos. Um, I do have a video here so you can see um, how to play around um, Leviathan. But mainly it's just 90% of the deck is just uh, block as much as possible and try and get as much momentum you can off swinging with Breakneck Battery, your Swing Fist Think Laters, and then um, swinging with Club straight after. Um, so yeah, we'll go straight into the video. First or second? Um, I'll go first. Let's cut out all the chalk noises. This deck makes me think again. <laughs> Six. 
I'm just gonna blow it away from camera. Into one. Yep. Six. Not six. Picture mark. Mm -hmm. Pitch size mark. I'll block three. Take three. Yep. Tink. Actually, that goes there. Swing fist. Yep. In team one. This. Is this one? Yep. Tink trigger. Swing five. Um, maybe. Take five. Pass. Uh, tunic gas pass. Uh, these two should be in there.
start, then I'll go potty. Starting six. So, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So, what, eight? So I'll take seven. Screen for four. Yep. <clears throat> I'll block two, take two. Yep. Scabs. Mm-hmm. Take four. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> take four. Break neck battery. In team one. Six. six. Take six. Five. No, block two. No, block one. Take four. Shut the fucking tree. Let's go. Let's go again. Take one. You've blocked your fist, right? Yes. Four. Zero and six. Ah, yeah. Six. Four. Four. Have you played yours? No.
Attack Rex. Huh? Take two. Yep. Uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Mm. This? 